buying a house is such an exciting time, but there are 10 mistakes that I believe it is in your best interest to avoid these like the plague and you will have the smoothest home buying process as possible. A lot of these mistakes are also going to help you not have buyer's remorse and regret your purchase later on down the road. So I have written out 10 mistakes in the note section of my phone that I have seen throughout the years as a real estate agent that I've seen buyers and sellers make that you are not gonna wanna make if you are buying a home and I've saved the most important one, in my opinion, for the end. So be sure to listen to the whole thing. You're not gonna wanna miss anything. I have my cold brew with cream almost out. Grab your beverage of choice and let's get into it with the first mistake. And some of these are things that I've mentioned before on my channel, so I'm gonna try to speed through those and then others I've never mentioned before. So using the listing agent to represent you as a buyer. I'm surprised by how many buyers think that what you're supposed to do when you want to look at a house is call the agent on the for sale sign. No, 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 don't do that. That is totally not how it works. Basically, I'm not gonna go too into this because we have mentioned it before, but in a nutshell, the listing agent is hired by the seller to represent them. They have the seller's best interest in mind, or hopefully they do, because that's who they're working for. You as the buyer, want to have your own legal representation, which would be your buyer's agent. You don't pay them anything, it's free to you, so it costs the seller. The seller is the one that pays for the real estate commissions for the listing agent brokerage as well as the buyer's agent brokerage. So you as a buyer don't pay a single penny for a realtor. The realtor's free to you, but you're gonna want your own legal representation, someone who's in your corner negotiating and fighting on your behalf, giving you the best advice because Sometimes it works out and sometimes, you know, there's circumstances where it, it might be a good idea, but for the most part, it's not going to be in your best interest to have the listing agent represent both you and the seller. It's just going to be a conflict of interest. It's actually, it's actually called dual agency and a lot of agents won't even do it because it can get messy and just is not, not the best thing. So the second mistake that you're going to want to avoid is forgetting about property taxes. Another thing that a lot of buyers don't really realize is that the property taxes on one end of town can be drastically different from the other end of town and not even that far, like literally like two minutes away, the property taxes could, could change and be different. The reason why that is so important to you as a buyer is because the property taxes are going to affect your monthly payment. And so maybe you can afford a $500,000 house in North Salem, but if you're looking in South Salem, you can't afford to go that high because the property taxes are so much higher in South Salem. So just an example, but something to keep in mind is don't forget about property taxes, which leads me to mistake number three, looking for houses without being pre-qualified. I know it is so exciting when you decide you want to be a home buyer, you want to just get on the internet and start looking at those houses, but as a realtor, I don't even talk to my buyers about what it is they're looking for in a home yet until we have heard back from their lender about their numbers and their criteria because otherwise there's really just no point. You really want to talk to a lender because as a buyer you can't just say, I want to buy a $700,000 house. Your lender is the one that gets to tell you based off of your debt to income ratio, your credit, your income, there's a lot of different factors that come into play, but they're able to tell you how much of a loan they're able to give you. Also, you're gonna wanna talk to them because maybe you can afford to go up to $700,000, but your payment is gonna be a little bit higher than what you feel comfortable paying. So you're gonna to wanna to stay around 600, but you're not gonna know exactly what your payment would be or a really good estimate until you talk to your lender. So that's key. Talk to the lender first and actually talk to me first and then I will give you a really solid lender if you don't already have one and then we'll go from there. Mistake number four is only looking at things that can be changed. What I mean by that is I know um, it's really easy as a home buyer to be scrolling through those photos online of homes that you see and skip past a house that, you know, maybe you're looking for a, a home with a good layout and a decent sized backyard close to town. Okay, so maybe you come across a house and it has all of that criteria, but you're not even giving it the time of day because you scroll through the photos and you're like, oh my gosh, that kitchen is so ugly. I just can't deal with that. But that's something that can be so easily changed. Get a 
Home Depot credit card, make a few, some monthly payments at a, you know, it's really not that hard to change the, the kitchen cabinets or the counters or the floors. So try as hard as you can. I know it can be difficult to imagine a home um, the way it could look with your personal touch on it, but try as hard as you can to focus more on things like um, the area that it's in, the lot size, if that's important to you, you know, whatever that criteria is that can't be changed, try to focus on that. The fifth thing that you're going to want to not do, the fifth mistake you're going to want to avoid as a home buyer, might sound kind of random to you, but it's something I've seen a lot actually as a realtor, and that is when a buyer walks into a house and it is the perfect house for them, they love it, but it smells like cat pee or dog pee, and because of that, they decide not to make an offer. And it confuses me because I know that obviously no one wants a house that smells, but it's really not that hard to fix the smell of cat and dog pee. Trust me, I've seen it happen many times with people that I've worked with throughout the years, and so I know it can be done and it doesn't have to be that expensive. So if it's really the right house for you, don't look past it or overlook it just because of the smell, um, because that is something that definitely can be fixed. Maybe it'll cost a little bit of money, but it's not that expensive, especially if it's the right home. The sixth mistake is realtor hopping. You as the home buyer, it's really in your best interest to pick a realtor and work with them. Stick with that realtor throughout your home searching and your transaction and all of that. And you're not gonna wanna hop from realtor to realtor. I think a lot of buyers aren't, uh, don't really realize how the industry works. That's not the way that it works. It's in your best interest to pick one realtor and stick with them and they will represent you. The seventh mistake you're gonna want to avoid is buying a car or any really, you know, large purchase before buying a home, either right before or while you're in escrow is huge. Something that it seems kind of standard, like everyone should know that, but surprisingly, sometimes it happens, even if people are warned not to, and it will kill, it will squash your deal, you will not have a deal anymore. It really could affect things. So just don't make any big purchases, and if you absolutely have to talk to your lender first, like very clearly explain to them everything and they'll probably say, no, 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 wait, don't do that. Um, or maybe they'll give you another idea, but just don't do anything, just wait. The eighth mistake that you're gonna want to avoid as a home buyer is buying at the top of your budget. So, like I said earlier, you're gonna get, talk to your lender, you're gonna get pre-qualified. Maybe they're gonna tell you, okay, you are pre-qualified for um, $600,000, but, that doesn't mean you have to buy a house for that much money if it doesn't make sense. If that's not, I don't know, if it just doesn't, the, the monthly payment doesn't make sense for you and if it just seems like too much for you, you don't have to do that. Nobody wants to be house poor and just because you're pre-qualified for a certain amount doesn't mean you have to spend that much. Definitely know what, what monthly payment is best for you and know what your max is and it might not be the same it might be lower than what you're technically like able to spend on paper. Maybe the max you feel comfortable spending is only $500,000, I don't know. So just know your limits and what you feel comfortable with. Nobody wants to be house poor. The next mistake is feeling rushed throughout the home buying process. This is huge. I have talked to many people who have told me things like, yeah, when we bought our house, we." honestly didn't even really like it that much. We just knew our house had already sold and we needed to buy a new one and it was kind of the only one that worked out. And so, man, I know it's it's tough because sometimes that's the position that you're in and you just have to pull the trigger because you gotta buy and you gotta live somewhere. But if you are able to take the buying process slow, that's usually the best case scenario. I've had many, many clients who have sold their home and then stayed in an Airbnb for a few months in between while they're house hunting so that they you know, don't have to be rushed. And, and it also helps because it's difficult in this market getting an offer accepted that's contingent on your home selling. So it definitely helps. My last mistake that home buyers do not wanna make and that is not setting aside a fund specifically for repairs and issues that could and will come up in your home. And what I mean by that is oftentimes I see home buyers using every penny they have for their down payment, their closing costs, and then even furnishing the home, but they forget to set aside money for repairs that will come up 
potentially within the next year or so, or a couple of years even for their home. Say you purchased your home, you close on it, everything was great with the inspections, but then six months, a year down the road, the water heater goes out. Water heaters are kind of expensive, so there's always something that could happen. So just having that money aside for your home fund only is super important. And so I think that would be the last mistake that home buyers make is not accounting for that. Uh, that fun. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you grab value from this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And I will see you next time.